Hi, this is going to be the uh, uh, the third video for the uh, Ryobi 42 inch uh, 100 amp hour battery swap to lithium batteries. In this video, we're going to uh, build up the battery pack and slide it into the uh, mower, and then we're going to finish up the wiring for the uh, uh, the battery the new battery meter. For the battery meter, according to the instructions, it says to attach the power lead to the positive terminal of the battery. That probably makes more sense if you're working on some sort of a, a live solar system where it's on all the time. Uh, but for this one here, we have to move that over to some sort of a switched uh, 48 volt uh, power supply, which I did eventually find here in the instrument panel going to the existing gauge. So uh, for all the drama that's gonna be there for the wiring, uh, it does go from the that shunt on the negative side of the battery and it runs over here underneath this instrument panel to the, uh, uh, the power supply for the meter. And uh, with that, we'll go on ahead and uh, uh, move along with the video. See ya. Why red? Look at that. This is a lot. I'm going to over here. Over here. And we're going to listen. Why are not? Of course, I'm going to use the email. I'm going to use the plastic. And I'm going a little bit longer than the, the bolts coming to the battery, so I'm going to check uh, that internal right down the opposite on the side. But that looks like I'll just up. And I no sooner stood up when I remembered that part of the jigsaw puzzle was to get this in. And that is supposed to go underneath those two cables. So fortunately I don't have everything tied up yet, tightened up yet. Float around here, you never know when you're going to get a positive and a negative connected up to uh, across the short circuit. Oh. All right, so <clears throat> next we're going to get this uh, uh, shunt attached to the uh, negative terminal. So it has to go to the last negative terminal between the terminal and the cable. So I'm going to take this cable off and we're going to loosely fit everything just to. So according to the diagram, uh, this piece will get connected to the negative uh, terminal, between the negative terminal of the battery and the cable uh, going to the vehicle. And then I need a positive cable to go from the positive side, which would be this one here, 
over to this, and apparently that's where the voltmeter is going to register 48 volts. So you have to make sure that you're on the first and last cable of the entire circuit to get the 48 volts. So the way this is going to work is we got to take uh, this thing's identified here as B minus, which on the uh, paperwork B minus is the battery. So B minus has got to go onto the uh, the terminal itself. And it's going to all, it looks like I'm going to try and get it all packaged underneath this uh, cover. This cover is going to be moving way over here. So this is going to be sticking out here. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to make these uh, connections underneath this cover. So um, this is the uh, little wire that's going to go from the positive terminal over to here. These are both uh, identified as uh, uh, B plus, so battery plus, and uh, those will go in here. So I think they're both battery plus. We only, we can, so I think you can use either one of them. I don't think it really makes a difference. So we're going to stick that in there. We're going to take, some, take a small screwdriver. We're going to tighten that up. Get that clamped down on there pretty firmly. And uh, this connector here, I put this on. You can crimp it on, whatever you want to do. In uh, this case, I just uh, 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 put it on, uh, put some solder in it. So it's a soldered connection, put a little shrink tube on it to make it look pretty. So battery negative, it's gonna be over here. I don't think, uh, yeah, we can't go that way. It's gotta go like this. So this is gonna have to be up. pretty thick so we can definitely put a, a thicker bolt on there so I'm going to use one of the original bolts run that down there a ways and see what we got over in this end yeah it's gonna it looks like it might work um, and then on the other end of the gauge is this connector so I'm going to disconnect this here temporarily Get that out of the way before an accident happens. So this end here goes into this device. So let's see if we can get that in the right way. Okay. So it looks like the way I've got this all positioned, it's only going to go in one way. Um, and the red wires towards the front of the mower based on the way I'm, I'm hooking this all up. All right. So that's going to go there. <coughs> and then the negative cable it's uh, re reattached to here. And it looks like we're going to try and use this. And now I can't get this in here because I've got this tightened up. It's all part of the jigsaw puzzle, getting this whole thing uh, assembled and de disassembled. Especially if I want that to be on top. Like one of the keys is going to be to uh, actually put the bolt in there before we put the cable on. And look at that. <laughs> this is getting to be more of a pain in the butt than, uh, than I thought it would be. I might have to do a little clipping here to uh, get a little bit better access to this, at least temporarily. So for that end, Take a pair of uh, tin snips. <clears throat> I'm just cut my way through there. So that way I can get that all mounted, and make sure this is still attached. Got that snugged up. And this is gonna go on here. The matching gold colored bolt and nut, washers and nut. I'll have to get myself an open end uh, 
14 millimeter to hold the bolt while I tighten the nut. Okay, so then going over to the positive terminal, we can hook this back up. We'll use one of the new bolts, go through that. Oops, almost forgot this one. Not sure what that is, but it's all 48 volts, so it must be part of the operation of this. So I'll take a chance and go ahead and hook that up on here. This. problem here so I'm gonna snip yeah it's negative I shouldn't short anything out here looking better. It's a little bolt down and it'll be back down where it belongs. Alright, that's basically the connections we've got. I'm going to clean up this mess here a little bit. Double check everything. Uh, check the bolt heights, make sure I'm not going to cross thread or not, not cross thread, but bottom any of the bolts out. And if it looks all looks okay, uh, then we'll be back in uh, just a minute. Now, yep. just looking things over, I did uh, see that I did make a, another mistake in the jigsaw puzzle. The green bracket needs to be turned around because these two holes need to be over here. So, I, fortunately, I don't have everything tightened up yet. So once again, I'm gonna take these two bolts off and we're gonna spin this bracket around. So I also uh, checked the length of the bolts and uh, if you use the bolts that were originally with the lead acid batteries, I took all the washers off and everything and then hand uh, tightened them up. And uh, they bought them out very quickly. So we can't use these bolts because we'll blow something out on the uh, inside of the battery if you try to tighten that up. These holes are very, sh very shallow. So we're gonna go ahead and use the batteries, or the bolts provided by um, chins uh, batteries with the batteries for these connections. So I'm going to go ahead and swap all these out and then I'm going to have to play around with the uh, with this one here to make sure I get the right uh, bolt length to get through this uh, thicker uh, shunt. All right, so I've got all the uh, bolts uh, swapped out for the ones with the Phillips head uh, and hex heads that came with the batteries, except for uh, the one over here. Uh, that, uh, the, the, uh, the bolt that came with the batteries is too short. You only get about a thread of engagement. So I went to the longer bolt uh, because of the thickness of this and just to uh, make sure it's covered as far as not bottoming out because it's really close. I went ahead and put an extra washer in here. So there's two flat washers and a lock washer on here. Uh, this one here is still um, the bolt that came with this shunt with the uh, volt gauge, which is a bolt 
washer, black washer, and nut. And I think we're all set to try and button this up. I'm not gonna use these um, insulator cap covers uh, because when you put them on uh, these anyway, uh, they don't really cover up the whole thing anyway. And uh, for the most part, these here look like they're gonna cover it very well. So I don't see any reason to change those. Okay, I think I'm ready to tighten everything up. So according to the plan, I want to be careful when I put this in here because this is a negative and I don't want to touch any positives. Um, but I got to get a hold of the nut on the bottom and tighten this. This is the only M14. What do I have on here for a socket? Thirteen. So let's get a fourteen on there. So that's tight. Now that's very close to the top of the battery. I don't think it's going to touch when we tighten it all up. But just for fun, let's do that. We want this to fall into that slot, kind of. I'm going to have to cut that a little wider, I think. So let me take a quick break and see if I can fix that. All right, so I'm back again. Went ahead and cut this out a little bit wider, give me a little more clearance. So we can get this on there. So this is tight. And we switch to a 13. I've got that tight. These are supposed to be torqued up to. It's not very high, considering. Um, as you can see, I'm not uh, using the full leverage of the ratchet to tighten it. floating around here so I'm gonna be careful we don't short that out against anything like another terminal covered covered cover it's all looking pretty good I don't know if we're gonna use this cover on here because uh, it gets covered by this and I don't know how high I can get before I start to snag on stuff when we slide this whole thing in That'll be a real question. Same thing with this one here. But of course, nothing's really different there except for adding this one thin terminal on here. So maybe that's gonna be okay. This is a ground. There's no insulation around this. Should be all right. Doesn't look too scary. So like I said, I'm gonna put a little grease on those plastic slides and I think I'm ready to put this thing in there. Uh, found out another little mishap here. That is that this cable, when I put it on, uh, it's actually bowed out this way and, and this cover has a, a little flap on it like this one here and it won't go over that. So <clears throat> I gotta take these two loose and I'm gonna bend the, the wires so pushes toward the rear of the like that and tighten it back up. So now that can go back over there so it's covered up properly. I did throw a little bit of grease on the slides. i uh, kind of torn about that because of course, grease is a great uh, magnet for dirt. Um, but this whole thing is uh, considerably lighter uh, than it was, but it's still pretty heavy. They're about, like I said, about 25 pounds a piece. So with the tray, we could be looking at 120 pounds here. 
yeah, it's about right, 110, 120. So it still makes it kind of heavy. So I decided to just go ahead and grease it anyway. So we got that tightened back up. Um, this is all set. Got this wire sticking out here. I put a little bungee cord on here to hold these two connectors up. To keep those out of the way for when I slide the battery in. We have uh, this terminal here that's got to, got to avoid and this wire here. And then we're gonna hook this up after we've got this all in here, I think. I think. All right, let's see how this slides in. Slicker and it's not. Almost got away from me. Well, right or wrong, it's all the way in there. Let's get this thing out of the way. It's hooked on. That's on oak. Looks pretty good. Looks like those line up. I cleaned it up a little bit and started checking to see if I got all the wires and know where everything's going to go. And I thought, well, at this point, I could probably plug this gauge in. And notice I don't have the battery connected yet. And of course, this goes uh, straight to the battery. And uh, the gauge does work. Let me peel this up. This is a protective film on here. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, it's showing 52.7 uh, uh, volts. But the funny thing about it is that means it's actually creating a small drain on the battery uh, just by being plugged in. So I need to consider where I hook the positive cable up uh, to the positive side of the battery on the one battery for the 48 volts. Uh, I need to see if I can find a different place to hook that up to pull uh, 48 volts. I think that, so the next step in this process is I'm gonna take a look and see what's inside this panel. I know it's just some wire connections and see what it's gonna to take to get this thing uh, hooked up on here. Um, so let's pop this cover off here. And let's see what we've got in here. Four bolts out. Oops, key falls out. And there's all the wires for that and the wires for this gauge. All right, so part of the process of trying to find out if I can get uh, the 48 volts somewhere else other than the positive terminal, I'm going to go ahead and plug everything back in. Um, so I've got um, this box here that gets plugged into here. Everything is one-way connections. You really can't mess it up. And that's going to go underneath here and pop out the back here. And that's where we're going to find two connections back here that have to be plugged in. Uh, one is a small white connector that gets plugged in. And then this, what I called an automotive style connector, gets plugged in here. All right, so that's all plugged in. And then this box can actually come back this way because that's gonna get screwed down there. And then we can plug in the main battery uh, connection. That snaps in there. The black box is here. And this is uh, our gauge connection for this gauge. So now I think we can go ahead and turn the key on and uh, the old gauge lights up, so that's good news. So I'll take my trusty uh, Harbor Freight voltmeter and, and probe the connections back here. There's a black wire, 
and there's a couple green wires. So I'm gonna take this green wire here and I'm getting, oops, hold still a second. I'm getting uh, 52.5 volts. And that should be exactly what we're getting here at the back of the battery. I think I can touch those. Fifty-two point five. So the battery voltage is right here. So I think when we replace this meter, I think I'm going to jump her into uh, this uh, green wire and um, uh, see if I can run the new gauge off of the, uh, that power source because I don't think it's a very big draw at all. It's just basically enough to uh, power the light in here. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take this gauge out, wire up that gauge, see what happens. So we've got the battery slid out here a little ways, push this plastic cover back, and uh, we're going to disconnect this uh, small power lead that goes to the shunt. Together. Right, gotta stop banging into stuff when I've got this all plugged in. There's 48 volts running around. Get back out here. Protective cover back on. We got this wire out here. Let's slide this back down on here. There. It's starting to look more original again. Slide that back in. Get this white connector back on. So I'm going to clip this wire off and uh, I'm going to run the wire up to there and see what happens. Attached the green wire to my original uh, yellow wire. Fish that down under the cover and underneath here and come up out here. And I've got it hooked up to this green wire that was on the back of this gauge. So this is plug, plugged in like this. So I've got that unplugged. So I've got the other connections connected up, the original connections. And then I got the, uh, the new gauge. And I'll go ahead and plug that in here. And then we'll turn the key on. And right now it's on amps. So we can get over to volts, 52.63 volts. Turn the key off. And the gauge goes off. Key on, gauge turns on. 0.3 amps, no amp hours. 0% battery, probably because I don't have the high and low set yet. But it's got 52.61 volts. So I think that's the electrical connection we want. So I think the next step is now to turn the key off. And I think I can go ahead and button up the rest of the stuff that I have. And then we'll work on this panel to get the uh, new gauge mounted in the, in the panel. All right, I did a few things to tidy things up. Um, the green wire that I added that goes from uh, the, the voltmeter attachment, uh, battery life attachment, I ran that in here. I put in a connector here so that if this ever battery pack ever has to be slid out, this can be unplugged. I ran the green wire up to here and connected that to the green wire on the existing gauge which measures uh, basically 48 volts when the key is on. Then I ran this wire uh, for the new meter. I ran that underneath here also. So uh, pop that out here. So this is ready to go in. In order to get this gauge inside the panel, even if we make it larger, we gotta have the plug. So the plug is gonna be on this side. We'll tidy this up with some zip ties. In here, I put a couple zip ties in. To uh, clean this up, 
make it look pretty. Uh, the battery's not slid in all the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now it's in all the way. So this is gonna go here. This is ready to go here. Let's kind of space this wire into the kind of going underneath. are in place, the covers in place. This cover got pushed up a little bit. Let's put that in here. Okay. Let's see if we can get this uh, cover on here when we're done. But so that's why this is back in here because this cover goes down a little bit. Oh, it's got a pretty good size hump in it. So let's see if this thing will actually fit. It's easy enough to get back into. Then we will move around to the back and finish putting this back together. Now I did find out <coughs> there's actually four screws that you have to take out, these two and these two. And this one I did not have to take out, so I went ahead and put those two screws back in uh, because they, they didn't have to come out for this uh, battery removal. Now these four have this type of a clip on it, which is a little threaded spring-loaded fastener. You know, squeeze that down a little bit, put that back on, and that basically just goes on here. Well, if you recall, I had some trouble with this one because this is actually two pieces of plastic here, and a clip apparently attaches to this one, and for some reason, they put, well, probably because it's so much vibration, they put or like a Loctite on the bolt, and apparently that was so tight that it actually twisted this fastener and kind of damage the plastic. I think it's gonna close up okay, but we'll see. So, oh, one thing I did forget. I gotta get those two screws in up here. And the, the master bolt that's clamping the hole. This one. So we'll see if we can find that hole. Should be right there. The long one's going to go in here, and the short one's going to go in here. Find it back. There it is. start these with a hand screwdriver and just finish them up that way but you, know, you can't find the center of the just Let's do it the old-fashioned way I guess Take this off again. All down. Screw screws are for there. So now let's move over to the back. Okay, 
started. 15 millimeter. Looks good. Next will be Thirteen millimeter again. Next, we'll put this cover on. Now, one thing I did notice on this cover is it's got a couple of little hooks here, and they're kind of like upside down from what you would think. So, what they do. Is it got to go into a couple slots down there, and then they slide up, and then there's three little tabs here that lock into these holes, and those should just uh, snap in like that, and the panel should be pretty much in place. So we'll put these four back in carefully. Get them all started first, so I don't have to fight it too much. I don't get it in the center of that clip, it, uh, it's hard to find. See, it's starting to spin already. I don't think I'm going to get that one tightened up, because that one's pretty much broken. And that Loctite is uh, kind of gums it up, so it's a little hard to get it in there. I should have took some of that Loctite off. All right, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. That bolt has started, so. All right, so we got everything buttoned up here on the back. All the hardware is back on, covers are on. So the only thing left is to go over here and uh, get the meter mounted. And I think we should be good to go. As a matter of fact, we're at the point here where we should be able to get on this thing and see if it actually moves. Key on, there we go. So for me, the biggest challenge now is going to be uh, getting this uh, hole enlarged because this hole here, uh, from what I've read, is uh, probably a two inch hole. Uh, the outside of this is 2.2. And the ID of this one, or the OD of this one is 2.1. So if I make this 2.2, It would actually work. So my point is, what I'm going to do is I had my uh, I had my magic marker of some sort. I'd mark it, but the ideal thing to do is to actually draw a line around here, and that's the size of the hole that I need to fit this one in there. So we'll take this wing nut off, take this bracket off. Leave that here. Back into here. 
and uh, these aren't that tight. So we'll just take a uh, seven millimeter socket, loosen those up. If anything drops, it usually just goes straight to the floor. But I don't want to drop anything for purpose. Now, as far as cutting this out, this is going to be a challenge. I'm going to have to experiment a little bit. Uh, some people said use a steps a whole step saw, but that is a big diameter step saw, step hole saw, and uh, they're pretty expensive for using just one time. Uh, unplug it, and our gauge is out. And in an ideal world, we would unplug this, shove that through there, and put our gauge in. And it's just not going to fit. So we got to enlarge this hole. Um, so one thing we can do, it looks like these connectors are all pretty easy. He's going to take a picture of the connectors and uh, unplug everything so I can get this out where I can work on it. And I'm going to try and use a, a Dremel to just slowly enlarge that hole and see how well that goes without driving me crazy. So with that being said, uh, uh, yeah, I better take a picture. So I got a few pictures, so this should all come undone. Wow, fancy connectors. This is all one wire, so this is just gonna slide off these uh, spades. It's gonna, it's gonna pop off of there. Yeah, there's probably something blocking holding them on. So I might have to investigate that a little closer. Somebody with more know-how knows how to get those off than I do. Well, there's actually a little tab. I found it by pulling all these covers off of here. There's a little tab sticking out here. And if you squeeze, uh, push that in, uh, it slides right off. And the same is true on these. There's a little tab on the other side. A very small one on these. And you can actually squeeze them through the, uh, the plastic covers so you don't have to slide the covers back. Same thing with these, amazing. And there it is. All right, first I'm going to try a small grinding, grinding wheel on this uh, Dremel, or it's actually a Black & Decker, but... So this is going to be slow and painful. I'm going to go ahead and do this until um, it looks like I can uh, actually fit the gauge in. You don't need uh, to watch all that. Very close. I'm going to finish up a couple circles with this uh, sanding wheel. did uh, scratch up the face of it a little bit in a few spots. And there we go. It took a while, but yikes, it's in. All right, let's see if we can get everything plugged in and clamped up. So this can go on here. Kind of weird, it's a plastic 
wing nut. And once again, it doesn't have to be that tight to hold this thing in. So I think I'm bending it already. Yep. We're gonna try that angle. See how that works. So that's tight. This gets plugged in. And then the other plugs. And two little itty bitty ones. Oh. Gonna do some guessing here. I'm guessing that one and that one. Get some big plugs. I might have to look at the picture. These plugs all look identical to me. Yeah, it's hard to tell. All right, shut her off. All right, um, I got all the wires connected back up after consulting the uh, pictures I took earlier. So everything's connected up, got all the sleeves pushed on. Uh, took this uh, cable from the new um, battery meter and uh, coiled that up and uh, gave it a little zip tie here. And that's about the only thing under here. So we should be able to just drop this back in here and uh, put the bolts in if I don't drop them all. That's not like it disappeared. So if I don't like the angle of this meter, I can go ahead and change it later. Uh, the buttons are pretty hard to read and they are actually clickable buttons. When you press on them, you can feel the click. But, um, not that you're gonna be changing it much when you're mowing. I think that'll work. The key in. goodness down to 52.5 volts all the lights work the headlights work I don't I've never used a USB port but uh, the lights on it apparently there's a light there so it's working of course the mower won't work unless you're sitting on it so I think we got it so I think we got it. And that's the end of the uh, third video. I uh, got the batteries in, gauge is hooked up, and uh, it's all set to go. Um, if I do another video, a couple things, I'm gonna, maybe after a few weeks, I get some information on uh, the longevity of the batteries and how much yard I can actually mow. I'll make a short video on that. And before winter, I wanna work on a video, um, hooking up some heater pads and some insulation on the battery pack. Uh, see if I can rig up something that uh, will work for that. I think I could come up with something for about a hundred bucks. So with that, let's go mow some grass.